Hi guys, welcome back to the garage, uh, part five of the PX engine build. Hopefully this is the end of it. Uh, I think I've got everything I need to finish it, as far as I can anyway. Um, so let's just get stuck in. Right, we'll put the top end on first, I think. I've given the barrel a very light hone and it's absolutely bang on. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it at all. The very small marking that was in there has gone. So we shall give it a quick, it's already been lubricated, I'm just giving it a bit more. And then we're going to have to fit our piston because I'm going to put, it on, put them on together, the pair of them. So I am hoping I don't have a piston ring compressor here. Not of this size anyway. I'm hoping with that cable tie around there I could get them started. So we shall give it a go and see what happens. Fingers crossed. Oh, is the answer? We can't. Oh, bum. Try again. I was really hoping this would work. Let's try squeezing them. Find the gap. There we are. Why is that so tight? Right, attempt two. Just double check the rings. Do they seem all right? They're free to move in the slots. I mean, something wrong. Right, there we go. Slightly old fashioned way. Squeeze them in. Very gently. Oh, you twat. There we are. That was considerably tighter than I expected. Right, they're in. Didn't go quite as well as I hoped, but there you go. You can't have everything. Let's get the engine block. Okay, so we need a base gasket. Which it goes like that, I think. So that was good. I'm just going to uh, lightly grease them as well because you can get corrosion building up on the studs. Sorry to get in your way. And then we have our little end lubricated. So hopefully we will be able to uh, get our 
gudgeon pin through. Just hold that there. Get them started. Right. I think we're going to have to uh, warm this up. It's probably not the best view for you, but it's the best way for me to get at it. So we need to get the gudgeon pin through the small end. Which should be lined up. And that looks good. I'll just try tapping it first. There's no strain on the crank. No, it's too tight. I was hoping that would just push through. But I don't think it's going to. In fact, it isn't going to. Right, I think that is all lined up now. And it is, it's started. Right, get some heat into the piston. Let's see if that's any better. Oh, we've got that started then. There we go. A few gentle taps. Let me to knock it through. Right, now I have new circlips, which I'll just stick on and then bring you back. Right, circlips in that side. Right, right, we have a copper gasket which has been annealed. And also is getting a smear of uh, copper grease, which uh, whether you've got to do nowadays, I don't know, but I was told many years ago that the copper gaskets, it was a good idea to do that. And it's something I've always done, so it may be right, it may be wrong, I've really no idea, but I do it. Right, there's our cylinder head. The O-ring is uh, good, so that can just be slipped on. And then we have a flat washer and a spring washer for each stud with our sleeve up top for the uh, cowling. I'll just fit the rest of those and bring you back when we torque it. One second. Right, torque setting. For some reason I've got 14 pounds in my head. Uh, I don't know if that's right, but that's what's in my head. So if I'm wrong, I will put the correct figure up at this point. Uh, but I'm pretty certain it's around that, so that's what we're going for. And in a diagonal sequence. Right, our clutch cover. It's got a new rubber O-ring. And we need a little bush, so a little bit of oil on the plate, grease I should say, a little bit of grease on our bush, which just sits down in there. Another little dab of grease on the face of that. And that should just pop on there. Let's just try pulling it out of the screw and see what happens. I'm still missing a breather off the top. Yes, it's going. So it's got to be the rubber O-rings a bit, because it's new, it must be a bit tight in its uh, groove. Yeah, no problem. Nice and even. So flywheel. Get the flywheel taper clean. It shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't be really greasy. And then a new woodruff key, which seems a bit big. Oh dear, we're not doing well, are we? Try and gently persuade it to go sit a little bit deeper. It's better. 
It's a bit tight. Right, stator. I'm going to get the electrics up through that hole. Get those upright. Now that to follow. There we go. Then come up there like that. And in our stator marks. Have to line up down here. Right. The actual flywheel itself. I'll do a quick clean. There we go. Yeah, that's going to be okay. I'll put a torque figure up for this. But I've always just done them up tight, to be honest. Oh, and that's tight. There we go. So the last thing that we have oh, is our carburetor. I'll just clean that off again. So there's our box. I'm just going to scotch bright that mating surface. Because it's a little bit corroded. Right. Screw. I thought I had a non auto loop gasket, but I haven't. Right. So I'm going to stick this with a bit of gasket cement. Again, personal preference. Some people do, some people don't, some people just grease them. But uh, I don't want any air leaks, so we're going to go with that. And I'm going to do the same on the box because now we're non auto lube. I don't mind filling that gap in there to stop any air getting in. So that's the important bit, I'll do it all. This end was all the auto lube end. which is now redundant and that channel is redundant right and in our screw I'm just going to put a dab of thread lock on it because I don't want it coming off I think that's going to come undone. No. Right. Good. Okay. Just some muck on there. Which I hadn't noticed. It's only muck. But better clean than, a, than dirty. Okay. So. We need our carb fitting. Our carb box is on and tight. We have a paper gasket on the bottom of the carb, which has been greased. Now, I'm not using sealant on this one because with the carb box sealed, that should be okay, just greased. And the carb has to be tipped in gently from the back to get the air screw through the hole in the back of the unit. And then we have, on this one, two shoulder bolts now there are specific washers for this because you can't get standard ones in and I can't find them. There's also a torque setting for this uh, which I will also put up but to be honest I don't use that, I just tighten them down evenly by hand, I, I can't remember ever talking to be honest. But it's good practice to do so. Right, I've looked through the box a bit 
and I haven't got the right washer. However, all they are are standard M7 washers with the centre drilled out to 9.5 milli. So I just made them myself. So they fit directly the same size as the top of the cap. So spring washer under the cap and washer under that spread the load on the carb. And then that should, if I get the right Allen key of course, should just screw down. Now sometimes it's possible to have this slightly misaligned because it's only held by one screw. So if that's the case, just check the holes have lined up and you can gently tap the box around with them. I've never had a problem with them coming loose. I've never had a problem with them warping the carb base, but it is good practice to use the right torque setting if you've got the right torque bits. I don't have this size in a 3 8 drive, sadly, I don't know. Thought I had, but I couldn't find out either. Right, so carbs on. I have got an airbox lid which needs painting, which goes on there. Rub a seal through that. Uh, there's meant to be a seal around here which I haven't got, so I'll just paint that and uh, sort out a seal at another point at some point in the future. And then the final job before we finish is to put our uh, drain plug back in with its new washer, but I won't show you that, that's a simple screwing job. So there you are, that's all done. Well, as much as I can. So, thanks very much for watching, and please call back to the garage soon. There'll be lots more tinkering with various classic vehicles. So I hope to see you again. Bye for now.